Pastor Wolfmuller here. If you've been around the Home to Rome guys or any of these Catholic apologists for longer than 30 seconds, you've had their conversation about sola scriptura, that you've gotten the we invented it argument in crass and subtle forms, no doubt. It basically says, hey, the church chose what books are going to be in the Bible, therefore the church has authority with, above, around commensurate to the Holy Scriptures. In fact, the Holy Scriptures have authority because the church recognizes that authority or something like that. The, the argument, you know, it takes a lot of different forms, but it basically comes along and says, hey, Sola Scriptura is a Protestant invention, and your rejection of the authority of the church and the authority of Scripture puts you not only out of line with the Scriptures, but it puts you out of line with the church and so forth. Pastor Will Whedon of The Word of the Lord Endures Forever has done a really beautiful job of gathering up a handful of quotations from the church fathers that speak of the authority of the church. We've got some Aquinas and Augustine and John Chrysostom and and some other things. And this video basically is just showing you those quotes from the church fathers for you to meditate on and think about. These are things that the church fathers wrote, and they wrote them about the scriptures and the authority of the scriptures and the unique authority of the scriptures. Now, I always think the critical question to ask to if you're Lutheran or not Catholic, and you're talking to the Catholics about the authority of the church is to ask, what is it that you would have me believe that the prophets and the apostles have not written? And that's the critical question to kind of cut things loose and clarify. But what I'm going to show you is these quotes from uh, from Pastor Whedon that he's gathered up for us. It's a really great thing. I'll put the link to his article also in the uh, in the description so you can track that down as well. I hope you enjoy it. The unique authority of the Holy Scriptures, according to the Church Fathers. We'll go by order here, starting out with Cyril of Jerusalem, a birth order here. Look at this beautiful, beautiful passage. For concerning the divine and holy mysteries of the faith, not even a casual statement must be delivered without the Holy Scriptures. Whew! Nor must we be drawn aside by mere plausibility and artifices of speech. Even to me, and this really is a reflection of Galatians chapter 1, where St. Paul warns about an angel or even anybody speaking a different gospel. So even me, who tell you these things, give not absolute credence unless you receive the proof of the things which I announce from the divine scriptures. For this salvation, which we believe, depends not on ingenious reasoning, but on the demonstration of the Holy Scriptures. What a beautiful passage. Next in line, Basil, Caesarea, looked like this. Is this guy? You know, I've got the, my church father trading cards. I don't have a Cyril card. Now, Basil's often brought into the conversation because look at this. This is a denial, great denial of Sola Scriptura. Look at the authority that Basil speaks of. Tradition. Concerning the teachings of the church, whether publicly proclaimed or reserved to the household of faith, we have received some from written sources, while others have been given to us secretly through apostolic tradition. Both sources have equal force in true religion. No one would deny either source, no one at any rate, who is even slightly familiar with the ordinances of the church. If we attacked unwritten customs, claiming to be of little importance, we would fatally mutilate the gospel, no matter what our intentions. Or rather, we would reduce the gospel teachings to bare words. Now, there's a couple of things about this particular passage that are really uh, helpful to look at. In other words, we have St. Basil here, who gives a very generous view of the tradition, the apostolic tradition in the church. And we say, okay, but what when it comes down to to doctrine. When it comes down to fighting, let's see if Basil says anything else. I got a couple here. Concerning the hearers, that those hearers who are instructed in the scriptures should examine what is said by the teachers, receiving what is in conformity with the scriptures and rejecting what is opposed to them, and that those who persist in teaching such doctrines should be strictly avoided. What doctrines? Teaching such doctrines here? Those that contradict with the Scripture. In other words, when it's time for theological fighting, how come I don't have a reference? I think the reference is the same here. Uh, I better check out that reference. But when it comes to a theological argument, how? what is your proof? What is your standard? Where do you go to? 
The answer is the scriptures. And that's the point. Here's another one from Basil. What is the mark of a faithful soul? To be in these dispositions of full acceptance on the authority of the words of Scripture, not venturing to reject anything or make additions. So subtracting nothing, adding nothing, holding to the Scriptures. For if, quote, all that is not of faith is sin, as the Apostle says, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, everything outside Holy Scripture, not being of faith, is sin. So we got to just put these two uh, quotes from Basil next to each other. Everything outside of Holy Scripture, not being of faith, is sin. So that the, the apostolic tradition has to be according to the Scriptures. And this gives us this critical question. What are you asking me to believe that's not taught by the prophets and the apostles in the written word? Next, Gregory of Nyssa. We got a couple quotes from him. On the soul and the resurrection, he writes, We are not entitled such license. I mean that of affirming what we please. We make the holy scriptures the rule and the measure of every tenet. We necessarily fix our eyes upon that and approve that alone. Uh oh. Approve that alone, which may be made to harmonize with the intention of those writings. You look at that. So the scriptures, scriptures alone, that's where we get our approval. Or again, Gregory says, let the inspired scriptures then be our umpire, and the vote of truth will be given to those whose dogmas are found to agree with the divine words. So when we're establishing doctrine, when we're establishing truth, when we're coming up with rule and norm, what is the gauge, what is the rule, what is the norm? That of the Holy Scripture. Look at that quote. Okay. St. John Chrysostom, he's up next. We got a couple of we got a couple of passages from him. Let's see here. How about this one from Homily 8 on Repentance and the Church? Regarding these things I say, I should supply even the proofs, so that I will not seem to rely on my own opinions, but rather prove them with the scripture, so that the matter will remain certain and steadfast. The, do you, so we already had uh, in, in Gregory this idea of the judge, and here we have this idea of certainty. How can I know, how can we know that our doctrine is true, that our doctrine is certain? The answer is we go to the scriptures. Here's another one from old Golden Mouth here. This is a beautiful one. And th this is a, a, such a common co thing that happens even in our own day. Here comes a heathen and says, I wish to become a Christian, but I know not whom to join. There is much fighting and factioning among you, much confusion. Which doctrine am I to choose? Do you, do you see the whole context here, and this is pretty important, is a matter of a polemics, of fighting. There's disagreements amongst people. So what? how do you know who, to whom belongs the truth? How shall we answer him, Christosom says? Each of you, he says, asserts, I speak the truth. No doubt. This is in our favor. For if we told you to be persuaded by arguments, you might well be perplexed. But if we bid you believe the scriptures, and these are simple and true, the decision is easy for you. If any agree with the scriptures, he is the Christian. If any fight against them, he is far from this rule. So what is the rule? That we hold to the simple and true scriptures, and this is what decides the matter for us. If you agree with the script, now does this, to, I think to the Catholic ear, this sounds so Protestant, but there's Chrysostom. St. Augustine, contemplating there, reading his books. Here's St. Augustine in his letter to Jerome. Only, uh-oh, only those books of scripture which are called canonical, have I learned to hold in such honor as to believe their authors have not erred in any way in writing them, inerrancy. But other authors I so read as not to deem everything in their works to be true, merely on account of their having so thought and written whatever may have been their holiness and learning. So which books are inerrant? 
only those books of the scripture. And all other authors, says St. Augustine, we read to not deem all of their works to be true. They, in fact, point us to the scriptures in one way or another. That's what they, they ought to do. John of Damascus, we're pushing a little forward here uh, in history, but there's John of He's on a different team. John of Damascus. It is impossible either to say or fully understand anything about God beyond what has been divinely proclaimed to us, whether told or revealed, by the sacred declarations of the Old and New Testament. Oh, on the Orthodox faith. Fantastic. And last, Thomas Aquinas. Look at this guy. Thomas Aquinas, the greatest Catholic theologian, writes, Nevertheless, sacred doctrine makes use of these authorities as extrinsic and probable arguments. So the tradition of the church and the church fathers but properly uses the authority of the canonical scripture as an incontrovertible proof, as the authority of the doctors of the church, as one that may properly be used, yet merely as probable. So, properly, the authority of the canonical scripture stands. The authority of the church is probable. For our faith rests upon the revelation made to the apostles and prophets who wrote the canonical books, and not on the revelations if any such there are, made to other doctors. So the thing that stands is the words, the revelation given to the apostles and to the prophets. And not just the, who wrote the books connected to the text. These are written down for us. So that the scriptures are given to us as a gift to sort out the theological fights. This has been the constant, and, and the sole gift to sort that out. This has been the constant teaching throughout the church. Thanks, Pastor Whedon, for doing this work. Thank you for watching this video. I'd love to see your comments. If you've got more that we can supply on this argument, that would be really great. If you're part of the Order of Catholic Trolls who are here uh, to take us down, then you can put your collection of quotations uh, down there as well. If you do, if you could provide references for sure and links also, if those sources are online, that'd be great to go and gather them and read them up in context. Thanks so much for being part of the conversation. May God bless us with the joy and peace and comfort of his holy word.